The thing that bothers me most, though, from what I've seen with the Giants so far is I, I was picking them to win the division. I'm not moving off it yet, but I just assume over time the offensive line will improve. It has not looked like it has. You, you know, like, he was picking who to win the division? Well, the, Gi the Giants are the second-best offensive team in the division and the second-best defensive team in the division. So while they're not as good offensively as the Cowboys, they're much better defensively. Same thing on the other side with Washington. Not as good defensively, but I thought they'd be better offensively. But the offensive line still doesn't look fixed. It's still, like, really bad, and that's going to hurt Saquon, which is going to hurt Daniel Jones, and also makes me think it increases injury risk during the preseason. So, so where I come out on it is I wish they had fixed the offensive line. They didn't, but my main concern is Daniel Jones' health. So it's not the end of the world that he didn't play a lot in the preseason. Now, I'll tell you this. Before we came in here and I read this, and I kept reading it over and over again, it bothered me because I kept asking myself these questions. Is Daniel Jones a star in the NFL? No. Has Daniel Jones earned the stripes to not play in the preseason? No. Has he ever made a Pro Bowl? No. But I, I'll tell you two things that made me think why Joe Judge has not played Daniel Jones in the preseason, right? And number one, Max, they have these joint practices now, right? Mm -hmm. Where they're basically like having two extra games, but without tackling. And I can only assume that Joe Judge is saying, okay, I Especially like what with I, Belichick, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like what I've seen from Daniel Jones in these joint practices so he doesn't have to go out there in preseason. Number two, you mentioned the offensive line. They were second last year in sacks allowed with 50, only tied with Houston, and I can't even remember the other team, right? The Washington football team, right? So why am I going to put Daniel Jones out there with this offensive line? Same. And I'll say, to add to that, there aren't – Kenneth Galladay's not out there playing. These stars right. aren't out there playing. So I'm thinking in my mind, Joe Judge doesn't want to shoot his confidence before the season even starts. So that's why I stand on this. But am I, am I a fan of it? No, because I feel like Daniel Jones needs those reps, right? He, he's losing time to get better as a human being. But I do understand a certain side of it from Joe, Joe, Joe Judge's point. You know, I brought up during, um, during the uh, draft, and Dan Orlovsky and Stephen A., boy, they jumped all over me. I wanted the Giants to grab one of the start, like if Justin Fields fell, grab yeah. him, right? Grab him. And my point was, you have competition, and, well, you trade Daniel Jones? Maybe not yet. Let's see what, if Justin Fields really is great. But the difference between Daniel Jones and Justin Fields is, I think Daniel Jones has the potential to be a good NFL quarterback. I do not see greatness. In Justin Fields, he might be a great NFL quarterback. That's the difference. The Giants are taking a guy who might be good, investing years of time in developing him, not protecting him with an offensive line. Ding, and, ding, and this ding. is what you get. That, that's what the real concerning part. All right, uh, let's talk NFC sleepers. You're up first here, Harry. Oh, NFC sleepers. Mm -hmm. And Molly, you're probably waiting on this. I'm going to go with the Cowboys. I'm going to go with the Cowboys because I'm not worried about the Cowboys offense. You can't, go. Me? Hey, you can't go with America's team. I said what I've said. Do you know what we mean by sleeper? People I think the Cowboys can make a hey, run. Hey, when the, last, when the last time the Cowboys made the playoffs? When the last time the Good Cowboys point. have been relevant? They, they should well, be. Well, they're when always have, relevant because they're the Cowboys. In a football Cowboys. sense, Molly, in a football sense, on the field. When the last time right, they been relevant? Every year we hear about it's going to be their year. It's the same old, same old. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the Cowboys because I believe in their offense. But I'm going to take it a step deeper. Dan Quinn is the new defensive coordinator, mm -hmm. there, right? If Dan Quinn has learned from his mistakes in Atlanta, I think the Cowboys can go far, right? And when I say his mistakes, when he was in Seattle, he had a front four, right? He had a defensive yeah. line. You didn't have to blitz. In Atlanta, you didn't have those guys but outside of Grady Jarrett. So what did he do? He continued to just send four. Times he sent three. I had no idea why he was doing that, but teams carved up the Atlanta defense. Now, the learning curve of that is, okay, if your system isn't working, you have to innovate. You have to adapt. You have to have plan B, C, and D. Preach. Right? If Dan Quinn can do that in Dallas, because I don't think they have that D line right now like he did in Seattle, but you want to know the strong point on that, de that defense? The linebackers. If you can utilize these guys, send these guys on blitzes, let these guys blitz off the edge and wreak havoc and, and just create chaos, I think the Dallas Cowboys Max, would be all right. Max, before you jump in, can I just follow up and ask him one thing? So when we were talking about Dan Quinn recently, I said the same thing about what he did with the Legion of Boom, et cetera, and I forgot who was the analyst, and they flipped it back at me and said, well, anybody could have done that with the Legion of Boom and those players. So that doesn't prove that he's a top-notch defensive coordinator. He just had a ton of talent. Well, I can agree to a certain point because when he when he was in Atlanta, right, Dan Quinn didn't have the, the, the guys that he had in Seattle. 
So he had to change up his defense. You can't just sit there and sit there, let the defense be a sitting duck and let uh, offensive coordinators and quarterbacks pick you apart. That's what he did not do. And we've seen that when he lost his job and Raheem Morris became a, yeah. uh, the head coach in Ubrick, who's a DC in, in, um, with the Jets now. Uh -huh. When they took over, we've seen a different defense. We see them started getting pressure on the quarterback because they were blitzing linebackers. They were blitzing guys in the secondary. They got innovative. They were doing things that they probably wanted to do but Dan Quinn didn't sign off of. Now, so I'm just hoping he's learned from his mistakes in Atlanta and can bring this Dallas defense to life. You got to be hoping, though. We don't know. We we'll don't see. know who he really I'll is. I'll say this. I don't normally live by the hope theory, the but sleeper, I'm living by the hope theory here. The sleeper in the NFC for me is the Arizona Cardinals, and they are in the most brutal division in football. I agree. And, I won't and by the way, one of the most brutal divisions I've ever, I can remember in football. Like, all four teams, to me, could finish first or last. I wouldn't be shocked, mm -hmm. right? But Arizona could finish for, like I, they're not going to win that division. Well, probably not. But but Kyler Murray, before the shoulder injury, when they were running him a lot, was unstoppable. And after he got hurt, they stopped running him as much, right? Because it's he's exposed to danger, and they fell off. And he stopped throwing the balls effectively because he had a shoulder injury, right? Who's coming back <clears throat> for Arizona this year? On defense, they bring in J.J. Watt. They're loaded. Now, man. it ain't J.J. Watt from the old days. They're who loaded. was one of the three or four best front seven players I'd ever seen. Like, all-time great, inner sanctum of the Hall of Fame, great defensive player. So he's falling off, but he got a long way to fall. And at this point, he's still better than, like, uh, most everybody else. He's still really good. Chandler Jones. Mm -hmm. Chandler Jones, he didn't play much last year. Chandler Jones is coming back. You just added J.J. Watt and Chandler Jones? And now Kyler Murray's shoulder isn't hurt? Who else did they add on offense? Uh, A.J. Green. Oof. A.J. Green to, to DeAndre Hopkins. 